there are claims made by some liberal and secular ideological extremists that the defamatory cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are about freedom of speech and freedom to insult. And they generally maintain that we must allow defamation, we must allow degradation, and we must allow gratuitous insult because it's all about preserving the right to express oneself, including liberty of thought. However, this is grossly misleading and it is simply not true. Why? Because there is no such thing as absolute freedom of speech. I repeat, there is no such thing as absolute freedom of speech. Every society on this planet has limitations and restrictions on speech. And these restrictions occur because of a competition of values. Now, in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, David Van Mill, an academic, he highlights this point. He says, the first thing to note in any sensible discussion of freedom of speech is that it will have to be limited. Every society places some limits on the exercise of speech because it always takes place within a context of competing values, which we'll discuss in a moment. And there are many examples in law and public life that I want to bring to light in order to show you that there are restrictions on speech. Take France as an example. The French criminal code punishes outrage, grave insult, of the national anthem or tricolor flag. Now, think about the hypocrisy here. You have the secular and liberal ideologues claiming that the defamatory cartoons of the Prophet wasallam are about freedom of speech, and that includes freedom to insult. But when it comes to insulting the flag and the anthem, then it's, you know, you can't do that you must be criminally punished. It was the outrage concerning these laws. Another example, the political cartoonist Maurice Sine, he worked for the French satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo for 20 years and he was fired in 2009. Why? Because he drew some cartoons. Cartoons mocking the relationship of the former French president Sarkozy's son with a wealthy Jewish woman. Another example is in law. A French court injunction banned a genus, uh, sorry, a Jesus-based clothing advert mimicking Da Vinci's Last Supper. A French judge ruled that the display was a gratuitous and aggressive act of intrusion on people's innermost beliefs. In 2005, Danish newspaper Jillens post and published caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but rejected the publications of cartoons mocking Jesus alayhi salam, upon whom be peace, because they would provoke an uproar. And there are many more other examples. Now, in many other countries, including France, there are defamation laws, product defamation laws, hate speech laws, libel laws, laws against the Holocaust denial, and so on and so forth. So, it must be made very clear that this has nothing to do with freedom of speech in an absolute sense. This doesn't even exist in academic discourse, generally speaking. It's, a, it's not a very robust idea, it's an incoherent idea. And the reason it's incoherent, because people appreciate that there are other values in society that are gonna be used to put restrictions on speech. In a nutshell, there's no such thing as absolute freedom of speech. So the discussion is not about freedom of speech per se, but it's about other competing values. So there is a key question here. What other competing values will these ideologues consider in placing restrictions on speech? Clearly, as a result of what we've just discussed so far, clearly the dignity of minorities is not a value they want to consider. So from this perspective, the problem is not with Islam. The problem is with the French state-sanctioned secularism. That's the problem because it doesn't value its minorities. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.